Happy Sabbath, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone, and thank you even for those viewers who are watching us today on Sabbath day. We want to welcome each one of us to our Bible study this morning. I want to encourage all of us to join classes that are within the auditorium, those members who are around here. We have several classes. Just find a class that has a few people and sit and share the word of God. For the children, we have classes outside in the tents. Please allow the children to attend their classes. And for that reason, we want to pray so that we start our Bible study. Brother Mayaka, pray for us. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord, this Holy Sabbath day. We thank you for the gift of life and for the gift of freedom of worship and for allowing us an opportunity to just sit at your feet to discuss uh, the word that you prepared for us. Lord, we ask for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and guidance from your Holy Spirit from the start until the end, for we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. And I want to bring our brethren who are going to share with us uh, our Bible study today. We have Jesus. Praise God and happy Sabbath. Um, happy Sabbath. God bless you. Happy Sabbath, saints. I want to welcome even the viewers who are watching us from wherever you are. May God bless you even as we delve into the word of God. And so today we are looking at Jesus, our P brother. And the book of Hebrews has given us a clear indication of who Jesus Christ is and who God is in his image. Uh, Jesus was the son of God and he was the son of man. And in Hebrews chapter 1, God says, you are my son, and he declares the son's divine sovereignty. And he declares uh, the son as divine Lord, creator, sustainer, and sovereign. And when he comes to Hebrews chapter 2, he says, I mean, Jesus refers to human nature, human beings, as his brothers, as brethren. And he affirms that his, faith, his faithfulness is faithful to the Father. And in his human nature, he becomes a high priest, merciful and faithful. And so today, even as we delve into this lesson, we want to look at Christ, who is our faithful brother, and becomes a brother as a redeemer. Why is this so significant that in, in this concept of uh, him being a redeemer? We want to go into our memory text. Um, I could ask our sister Beatrice to read our memory text that is in Hebrews 2 verse 14. 2 verse 14. Hebrews um, 2 verse 14. And it says, Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil. Amen. And now this is the things that we are going to look at. Inasmuch as this, that Christ through his blood, through his, uh, his being born as, as, as human, he had to go, to go through this journey so that he can save mankind. And uh, remember in the Levitical law, when we look at how someone was being redeemed. In the old days, it, uh, in the law of Moses, it was, if a person was poor, he was to be redeemed by a brother. And a brother was so close, either an uncle or a nephew or anybody who was close. And that's why we see, even in the book of Ruth, Poas redeeming for, for Naomi. That is for uh, uh, Melik. Mm -hmm. so, so now, when we look at Christ as our redeemer, what comes into your mind, brother heavens? What comes into your mind as uh, a, a brother redeemer? Thank you. When you look at Christ, indeed, he had to come for us in that we, we are lost. But through the law that we see very, very clearly, in that when somebody is lost, 
you have to redeem that person. That's why Christ had to leave the throne to come and be with us and redeem us from where we were. And that's why Hebrews is coming at it very clear that indeed this brother was a faithful brother. Thank you so much, Helda. And I want to bring this into, into our attention. Remember, in those old days, it was about poverty, that when people are so poor, they are redeemed. Mm -hmm. So you redeem from them from their poverty. But the redeeming that God really wanted us to be redeemed from was the bondage of sin. Yes. And so, in those days, brothers will do the redeeming. I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, there is no brother who can redeem you today. It's not about poverty, but the poverty of sin. And so the only perfect gift that was given to us to redeem us was our only Christ. When so Christ comes, he, all, all the claiming of the Old Testament that they were doing in those old times is no more. Mm. So the only one who can redeem us, yes. as much as we may be in our troubles, as much as we may be in our own situations, the only redeemer that we have is the redeemer of Jesus Christ. And now, it's not only about the suffering that you experience today, but the redemption is about our salvation. And that's what we are looking as our brother, as our redeemer. Mm. I, I want to move us forward and look at, um, in the book of Hebrews 9, verse 15. Hebrews 9, 15, I, I want to see, so that we see how is... Um, Hebrews 9.15, how Christ becomes our mediator and our covenant by death. 9.15, Manuel Mayaka, you can read. The Bible says, Hebrews 9.15, yes. that for this reason, Christ is the mediator of a new covenant. Yes. And that those, who are called, that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. Now that he has died as a ransom to set them free from the sins committed under the first covenant. Amen. I just wanted us to read that first because eternal inheritance. So we are talking about redeeming. So that tells us that for us to get this eternal inheritance, it's only through Christ our, yes. our Lord. Mm. And now I, I want us to move ahead and look at um, Hebrews 11, verse 24 to 26. 24 to 26. Uh, Brother Evans, if you found it, you can read it. Okay, I read. The Bible says, By faith Moses, when mm -hmm. he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, mm -hmm. choosing rather to serve affliction mm -hmm. with the people of God mm -hmm. than to enjoy the passing pressures of sin, mm -hmm. esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, mm -hmm. for he looked to be to the reward. Amen. We are looking at um, at Moses, at Moses who, at Moses who, who wants to identify himself with the the Israelites who were suffering, mm. and so he was never ashamed. I don't know, Sister Beatrice, what do you think? How did he do this? Christ Himself not to be ashamed of his life. Um, thank you so much, uh, Sister Rachel. You know. When we look at the example of Christ, I mean, Christ had all the privileges in heaven. Mm -hmm. And he had to leave all that to come to this world to redeem us. Mm -hmm. He had to take our own nature, the nature which is frail, the one which is um, bound to get sick, mm -hmm. to get into temptation. Mm -hmm. And he came in and put in this nature. But one thing that we need to note about Christ is that he was not ashamed to put on this nature because he wanted to save us. He says, that is where we go back to our key text, which says that he's not ashamed to call us his brothers. So he came in and he took in our, our nature. But the only thing that he didn't do, he didn't sin. If we try to compare Christ with what happened to Moses, Moses was in Egypt. He had all the privileges, the best education, the best kind of life. And then he had to leave all that because he was the next successor of Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. He had to leave all that mm -hmm. to come and suffer with the, with the children of God who were slaves. You can imagine, these were the rulers. Mm -hmm. he, was the, he was going to be the next Pharaoh. Then he left this to come and be a slave, be 
look down upon, suffer with the children of God because he was looking at something greater than this life. Amen. And for, for, for Jesus Christ himself, looking at the life of humankind, he was ready to suffer because he was ridiculed. Even in even the point of death, even in Gethsemane, even facing the, the kings of the day, he was ready to face and say, yes, I am the Christ and I've come to save and you know, he could have let it go, but he decided to show that indeed God is the Father and he has come to redeem. And so, even Paul himself says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Yeah. I, I know even when Moses was, I mean, even when Paul was doing his final journey to, to Jerusalem, and the people were telling, and the elders of Ephesus were telling him, no, if you go there, you will be arrested. But what did Paul say? Paul said, I'm compelled by the power of the Holy Spirit. And to, so today we are privileged to have the power of the Holy Spirit to help us to stand in times of hardships. And, and this is the reason why Christ says he's not ashamed to call us his brothers. And that is a great thing to me. For me, I, I, I was saying, how can God say that I'm the brother? Surely. When you find yourself being attracted or somebody who, who is of a position identifying with yourself, it feels good. If the president of today came here and said, yes, my brother Emmanuel, come here, how does that feel? It feels good to know that I am recognized amidst all of us. And so here, all of us, you and me, all of us are being welcomed as brothers. That gives me the joy. I believe all of us have the joy yeah. of sharing Christ as our brother. Now, Christ himself comes from above and is born of a woman and takes the, the, the position of flesh and blood. Mm. And remember the Bible says, the flesh and blood shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Mm. Emmanuel, what is it? Yeah. B before we consider the aspect of flesh and blood, yes. I, I want to agree with you that it is indeed a powerful thing to know that we are part of God's family. Mm -hmm. that, that a person so sinful, you know, so unworthy as me can be called a brother, you know, by Jesus. And, and I, I just love the, the, the book of Hebrews because there is no other book in the Bible that really talks about Jesus other than the, 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 the you know, the... the, 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 the uh, the book of Hebrews um, and, and of course uh, my sister talked about uh, Jesus um, as a I mean our brother and our redeemer and the Bible says that all of us uh, are fallen are sinful and we are fallen short of God's glory yes. and of course we know that the wages of sin is death so if we were to pay the price we will not afford it if we were to pay the price of, of, of sin, we will not afford it. We, we are basically helpless. But what we see is that God gave Jesus um, as, as, as the representative of man. Mm -hmm. So that then uh, he can now, we can now call him our brother. So uh, we, we have considered, then we have considered Jesus as our brother. And we have also so far learned that he did not consider it had to be identified with us he was he did not uh, it was not ashamed to be associated uh, with humanity mm. and the the, the 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 aspect of flesh and blood will then open our eyes so that we can see the reality of what jesus did for us which is which to me is, is huge is really huge and, and the question i want to pose is why would someone who is perfect you know risk for someone who is imperfect to save those who are imperfect why why would jesus take that risk and this is so huge like i've said for jesus to step into time um into humanity without the assurance that he was to go back you know that is the kind of risk that jesus undertook for us um so the book the, the book of hebrews basically tells us that jesus adopted our our human nature so that he could represent us and that he could die for us so um through uh through this then he he, he then exposes us to uh, eternity if you read the book of hebrews 2 
uh, 2.9 Hebrews chapter 2 2 verse 9 says verse But nine, we yes. see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels yes. now crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death so that by the grace of God he might test death for everyone. So that is the book that really uh, tries to expose the ideology of flesh and blood mm -hmm. and it, it it gives us an expression that uh, trying to emphasize that um, flesh and blood basically means it tries to bring out the weakness of humanity that we are weak we lack understanding we are subject to death and and jesus was made like us as his brothers in all things this means that uh, jesus was fully human and he, he didn't simply look like us he was he was truly human you know mm -hmm. and but it, it ever says that jesus was different from us in the sense that he did not commit any sin Amen. so what basically uh, happens is that he had a human nature but he was holy he was innocent and stained and he was separated from from sinners mm -hmm. we all have sinned uh, because naturally as human beings we have that tendency to sin which jesus doesn't have in in fact if if jesus uh, could be having that could have had that tendency to sin it it means that he also needed he could have needed a savior but but instead Jesus came to us as our savior Amen. and he destroyed the power of the devil and so he, he was able to overcome sin for us. Let, let me just share an analogy as I bring my thoughts to an end. We all know of a Cuban leader who was called uh, Castro. Castro, and, and this is a practice that most leaders do, that they have somebody who, who, who tests their food yes. before they eat it. So if, if this person dies, then they will not they will not eat this food so similarly jesus knew that the food we were to eat will cause eternal death so he knew that adam had tested death and he had passed it down to us we inherited that nature from adam uh, which exposes us to death but jesus stepped into that space um, so that he can free us from the nature of death and for me this is really huge Thank you. Thank you so much, Mayaka. Uh, flesh and blood like us. Christ humbled himself. You know, when he, he, he came to get some money and he was crying and saying, let this cup, take this cup out of me, but let your will be done. Be done. And you know, he, he, he lowered himself to a point that he could give his only blood and the blood that was blameless, blood that was perfect and holy, that Christ could step in our feet so that he can redeem us from our sins. And we appreciate Jesus being our elder brother, our redeemer, and now he has come in flesh so that we can identify with him and we can walk with him. Um, now Christ has been perfected through suffering. And when we read in... Um, Hebrews chapter 5, chapter 5, chapter 5, my archive, you can get us there, chapter 5, verse 9, and then we look at chapter 5, verse 9. 5, 9 says, Yes. And once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation mm -hmm. for, for all who obey him, mm -hmm. and was designated by God to be the high priest in the order of Mel Melchizedek. Amen. Now he, he has become our perfect gift so perfected through suffering what does this mean held to us perfected what do you understand now i thought christ was perfect what is this that we are saying that he was perfected in suffering yet he was a perfect god thank you this is a very very important area for us today as christians mm -hmm. in that when you look at the whole ministry of christ on earth it is summed up in this phrase that he was made perfect through suffering as we know today that uh, suffering, pain, and even death are the experiences that we go through every day. It is painful. It is painful as human beings. But Hebrews is confirming very, very clearly mm -hmm. that indeed Christ, who was our captain, mm -hmm. I think I call him a captain, eh, was made perfect through suffering. Mm -hmm. He went through many things. Eh? 
he came to be a human being for us so mm -hmm. that he can show us how we can how we can go through this life walk in this life but remain perfect mm -hmm. and what comes out very very clear that uh, why did god send him he sent him to be a captain to show us as a captain of a team you know very clear that uh, a captain of a team is very important he organizes the people, he brings them together, he has a strategy of winning. And this is what he came to demonstrate. That indeed, through him, when we look at him, we can find a strategy of winning. We can find wisdom in terms of winning. That's why we need to value our salvation. It didn't just come. It came through that sacrifice, that suffering that he went through uh, as Christ. And at the very important area that it comes out in the lesson here is the issue of obedience that Christ was able to learn obedience. Mm -hmm. What comes out very clear is that previously he had not been tested, but obedience is now being tested. Mm -hmm. He is told, you must go through this fire, you must die. And they said, yes. And they went through. And we can see that through this obedience, through the suffering that he went through, mm -hmm. he was tested and it was proven that indeed Christ was obedient. He obeyed his father and they went through death. And that's how he has come to give glory to his brothers. And one thing I want to make uh, to say is that uh, we can go through the same experience as Christians. A captain has gone through, he has been able to succeed. He demonstrated very clearly that indeed we can go through the same experience. Thank you, thank you, my brother. Just I'm imagining uh, Christ going through the suffering, leaving his father's throne to go far away to redeem children of his father. You can imagine like a mother who has given birth. Just your baby is just put on the other screen and you are just watching from this side. Emotionally, you cannot sleep when you are separated from your, from your father or your mother. And so when we are entangled in a relationship, I can imagine Christ who had a relationship with the father. He's seeing his son going to suffer on the cross. No wonder when Christ cried, My father, Eloi, Eloi, Lama Sabachthani, where are you? My father, my father, why have you forsaken me? And at that point in time, he looked at the father and the father was looking at the son. You know, that kind of suffering. But one of the things that gives me comfort, Helda, is when Christ said, Unto you I commit my spirit. Mm. He was assured, as much as he was suffering very far away, he knew his heart, his life was in the hands of the Father. And that gives us solace that Christ has overcome, and through his suffering, that we can have that eternal life. And through him, that Christ has suffered what we could have suffered. None of us, no, no one's blood can save mm. any of us except the perfect, Amen. The perfect blood Amen. of Jesus Amen. Christ. Now... When we, 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 we look at the book of um, Hebrews, Hebrews 12, verse 2, maybe somebody can read that. 12, verse 2. Beatrice? It says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, mm -hmm. despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. So Jesus Christ, as, as he started our faith, and, and the way uh, 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 our brother Mayaka was saying that uh, through obedience, through obedience, and he accepted to offer himself as a sacrifice, and so he lowered himself, and he came down and gave his life. And so he started our faith, and through him, we can trust him if Christ himself arose from the dead and is living and seated at the right hand of God, interceding for us. Then that gives us encouragement that even for us, we will get through that. Maybe a, a, a question I will pose to all of us. Some of us, we think that, um, yes, I suffer, I don't have food, I don't have shelter, and so... I'm going through challenges in life, and so uh, I'm suffering. What is it, Beatrice, about suffering for Christ? Um, one thing about suffering for Christ, we know that even as we suffer, 
we, are, we have a city that is coming. And Jesus, having been in this world and we saw that he suffered, we know that he's going to help us to go through this suffering. And um, when we go through suffering, there is a lesson. Remember that Christ has to go through suffering to be able to be equipped for what he was going to do. So for us Christians, we have to, you know, it's like we are being chastened to be able to go through uh, to, for, for what is awaiting for us. So even as we go through suffering, we have to know that we are going through this because the enemy is not happy with us. We are the brothers of Jesus. We are his brethren. So he will make sure that he press every burden on us. But as we go through this, we have to do it with hope, knowing that we are looking forward to a city. Yes. Now, Brother Mayaka, how can we witness then? How can we witness the way uh, even Paul, as Paul is writing this, is witnessing and declaring that for sure Christ indeed rose, Christ came for us. How for us who are living today, can how can we witness so that we can still keep the fire burning, not that we are suffering, but we are suffering in the name of witnessing for Christ, each one of us. You know, you know there's, 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 um, there's a statement I read uh, in Samatido that was saying, God has not promised us a smooth passage. He has, but he has promised us of a safe landing. Okay, so the beauty about suffering is that even Jesus suffered. Mm -hmm. So if Jesus, our Savior, suffered, how much more then should we also suffer for His sake? Mm -hmm. um, I, I normally take my evening jogs with my dog. Yeah, and there are times when the dog runs far from me, but when it meets uh, some danger it runs back to me you know and so there are times I think should I change the route because there are some routes I, I pass that pose a lot of danger you know mm -hmm. for, for, the, for the tiny animal mm -hmm. but, but what I learned is that those, those dangers on the way on the route that I jog have a, a purpose because then they draw the dog back to me when it goes astray mm -hmm. and so is our suffering mm -hmm. our suffering is good because it draws us even more closer to God. And so, and so we should go through it rejoicing because after all, Jesus won for us. Jesus um, has assured us of, of victory so that uh, then this suffering that we go through does not have no, has no opportunity to overwhelm us. Amen. Thank you so much. Yes, Elder? Uh, I think Paul made it very clear that indeed as Elder is saying that uh, God wants us to recognize Christ as our model. There are times we may have rejection, we may have persecution happening around us. He doesn't matter. He says, let's look at him as our model. He went through all this. So we should be encouraged. At times you may find yourself you are the minority in something is happening. Why do you go ask you to stand? And they say, this is no, this is sin. So it doesn't matter what is happening around us. But know that Christ is our model. He has demonstrated that indeed we can win. Thank you so much for bringing that aspect. I know in doing God's work, there are, you know, many are the people who are called like, come unto the Lord. And when they come in, they find life a little bit hard. Mm -hmm. Jesus was tempted. And even in, in Corinthians chapter 1, I mean the first Corinthians 10, 13 says, no temptation that has come to man that is um, so unique. All these temptations are common, but he, he overcame. Then how do we overcome? When Christ was tempted, he said, it's written. It's written. Yeah. So let's continue reading the word of God day by day and seek the power of the Holy Spirit because he will help us to continue in, in this journey of witnessing. Now, um, I want us to look at uh, Christ as our brother and as our model, as, our, as an, our, an, an example to us. I don't know, Beatrice, what, do we, what can we learn from this experience? Maybe we can read one of the verses so that we can... Um, uh, chapter 12, verse 1 to 4. Chapter 12, 1 to 4. Uh, it says, Therefore we also, since we are mm -hmm. surrounded by yes. so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight mm -hmm. and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with the endurance mm -hmm. the race that is set before us looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith 
who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving Amen. against sin. Amen. Amen. Now, let us see. How is Christ being an example to us? How is Christ as an example to us? How is he an example? Uh, thank you so much. You know, Christ has gone ahead of us. He's our forerunner. Mm -hmm. He has shown us how to run this Christian race. Mm -hmm. And really, you know, he says that for us to be able to run this Christian race, then we have to put aside anything that, that ensnares us. Because we can't run this Christian race with baggage. If I can take an example of an athlete who's going to perform, you know, because we are, remember that we're in this journey to heaven. As we're in this journey to heaven, I mean, we, we, we all are winners. But so long as we hold on to Christ, it's not a, a race that one person is supposed to win. All of us are winning. But how do we win? We win by holding on to Christ because he's gone ahead of us and he has shown us where the finishing line is. But as we're running this race, we have to prepare. How do you prepare for a race? You can't run when you have bags on you, you are putting on inappropriate clothing. You, you, know, you will not be able to run this race and you will not win this race. So what Christ requires us to do and just the way we prepare for a race, you will eat right. This comes to the message of health. You know, you have to eat right because there's some foods that we eat which actually cloud our memory and make us not to concentrate on things of God. We have to, we have to you know, like, um, you know, have discipline for an athlete to be able to win. They have to wake up early in the morning. Elder has told us here, every evening he goes, you know, he's disciplined, you know, to make sure that he keeps up to his uh, health regime. So as an athlete, they, you know, you have to practice every day. That is discipline. And then put on the right clothes. So as a Christian also, as we're on this heavenward journey, we have to also dress like Christians. We have to eat like Christians. We have to think like Christians. We also have to think about even the things that we watch. There are things that we watch that cloud our minds. But Christ has gone ahead of us. He has shown us what example that we are supposed to follow. And then he says, you know, like when we go to John 15 verse 5, he says that he is the he is the vine, we are the branches, you know? He's our model, yeah. you know? A branch can't look different from the, from, 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 the, from the vine. So we have to look like Christ, you know? And what did Christ do? He made sure that he, he resisted temptations because we all have uh, inherited this fallen nature. Mm -hmm. But we have the, uh, we, 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 we can make a decision to follow Christ and to refuse to live the way the world is living. And, um, and, and, and you see now, like, um, when we come to Matthew, like, uh, chapter 11, verse 28, it says that, come to me, all you labor, you know, and are heavily laden. You know, Christ won't take us all, take off this baggage from us because he wants us to finish the race. Amen, amen. Yes. And I want to come to Elder Evans. How do we exercise then our faith and obedience? Because if Christ is our our branch, I mean, is our fine and we are the branches and we are to follow the model or the example of Christ Jesus. How do we practice our faith and our obedience unto God? Thank you. Thank you. Pedro. I think it comes out very, very clearly that indeed we see Christ he learned obedience through two things I can say. Mm -hmm. By submitting to God's will mm -hmm. and number two, by trusting God's will. Because Remember, even when I was up there, I was praying that may your, may, your, may your will be done. And for me, that is the best way to do it, in that we need to submit to God's will. Mm -hmm. We need to be able to trust in God's will. When we are in that situation, then, yes, victory is on our side. Thank you so much, Helda. And, and I'm sure even my viewers, some of us who are there may be wondering, are there something I've been praying for? I've been asking for a breakthrough. I've been going through challenges in my life. And you wonder, really, does Jesus care when I'm, I'm holding on him and I'm calling upon him? But God says he will not forsake us. That's one of the things. And when Christ went through that suffering he said let your will be done my brother my sister if there's anything that is tough for you just ask that god his will be done and that he will give you the grace because even paul was told 
my grace is sufficient. So God's grace is sufficient for us. And um, in John chapter 14, verse 15, John 14, verse 15, if uh, one of us can get into there, and, and, and God sees himself, Christ said, if you love me, keep my commandments. There are some simple things that God has given us that we may do and, uh, and, uh, and give ourselves to him. And these are some of the things, Brother Evans, Ch I can see Ch your Ch point. John 14, 15, yes. it says, if you love me, yes. keep my commandments. Yeah, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love God, keep his commandments. God has called us to be humble, to worship him. First, he has called us to worship him, him only to be worshipped. Let us remove every idol of worship from us so that we may serve the Lord. And let us love one another so that God can also love us. And Christ said, if you get ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. Christ is very open and there is no any other way for us to get eternal life except through Jesus Christ. And he calls us that if we talk to him and ask him, he will talk of us to our Father in heaven. Now, even as we want to come to a close of this lesson today, looking at Christ Jesus, who is our faithful brother, I want us to take a quick round and just one thing that you got from here that has empowered you as a Christian to walk in this Christian life. Brother Mayaka? Thank you so much. Uh, you know, Kenya is known for as an athletics country. Yes. And um, my, my sister has brought out that aspect uh, very very nicely but so, so for me my take home for this lesson is I, I want to leave us with the words of um, song 499 yes. which is basically talking about what a friend we have in Jesus and and um, I, I, I'll just read the words of the first stanza which says what a friend we have in Jesus all our sins and griefs to bear what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Because we don't carry, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. So my submission to all of us is that we have Jesus, who is our brother and who is our friend. It is needless for us to carry our burdens. He is always there and he is willing to carry all the burdens for us. That is why he has come down to us and is associating with us as, as a brother and all of us are part of God's family. Amen. Thank, Thank you, you, brother. Beatrice, your last parting shot. I would just like to say that um, as human beings, of course, we have our hereditary tendencies, but we have to learn to stay away from them mm -hmm. so that we can cultivate new habits. And um, if I would just like to read from James 4, yes. verse 7, mm -hmm. it says, Therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So we have to resist the devil. And we can do this only when we take Christ as our brother and we embrace him, we confess him, we confess our faith. That is the only way we can be able to resist the devil. Amen. We need to confess uh, our brother Evans. Thank you. What I can say is that uh, Christ was made perfect as a high priest through obedience mm -hmm. and as we read in uh, Hebrews 5 9 it says very clear that indeed Christ became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him mm -hmm. so what remains for us really is which obedience okay. can we run this obedience through trusting in God surrendering to him that indeed we can be able to be victorious in this life. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for each one of you for sharing the word of God. And I know for each one of us, it doesn't matter what we are going through, God is there to raise up. There are many saints of the Lord who stood up for Christ, mm. but at some point they could find themselves they are not they are not doing the work of God. Peter confessed Christ, but when Christ died, he went back fishing. Many of us, maybe we could have fallen back out of accepting Christ as our Savior. We have gone back to our own fishing. May God help us as we come back even to worship him in, in truth and in faithfulness, to be obedient. And we confess our sins and is willing to set us free. 
Now, for my parting shot, I want us to see some stanzas in um, the song, our hymn, no? 626. It says, the first stanza, in a little while, mm -hmm. we are going home. Mm -hmm. There is rest beyond, there is relief from mm -hmm. every mm -hmm. care. And no tear shall follow in that city, bright city. So, th th in this life, there could be trials and temptations. But God has promised to give us eternal rest that in that in that place we shall have rest so in this life we shall have suffering but it's in a little while and in song 6:23 it says i will follow thee my savior though the road may be rough and thorny mm. trackless as the foaming sea thou hast trod this way before me though i meet with tribulations so did he tempted though I be, I remember thou wast tempted and rejoice to follow thee. I will follow thee, my Savior. Mm -hmm. And so for this reason, I want to encourage even our viewers who are watching to us this morning. And even as we study the, uh, Jesus Christ as our faithful brother, you can also be faithful. Mm -hmm. I can also be faithful. Mm -hmm. We can also be faithful in serving God and giving our lives to him. Because he only can help us to save us from this life. And so to that end, we want to say, viewers and our audience, we want to say God loves you. And he says he will not forsake us. In Psalms 23, he says, though we walk through the valleys of death, there he is with us. He will never forsake us. And so we pray that each one of you may find a place if you have been pushed so hard to the rock mm -hmm. that you feel that you cannot stand. I'm, I'm encouraging you knowing that our Christ has not forsaken you. It mm. doesn't matter what you're going through, but our Lord has not forsaken you. Mm. He's there for you. He's there for me. And mm. this life will end, but we have eternal life that is coming up. Mm. And so we thank God and thank you, my brothers, for sharing the word of God. And we will ask Brother Isaboke to finish with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you. I want to praise you for your goodness, Lord. Thank you for taking us through this lesson that indeed we have a, a faithful big brother mm. who is our captain. I pray that the Father, the messages and truths we have gotten from this Bible study may help us to stand firm, oh God. Mm. Thank you for our viewers and thank you for our listeners, oh God. May you continue to be with us. Thank you for the remaining part of the hour for the worship service. We pray the Father, you may continue to be with us. Is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We thank you so much and may God bless you. Enjoy the Sabbath rest even as we continue with the rest of the programs of the Sabbath. God bless you. Amen. And keep safe. Thank you.